What is happening, Big Brown Breakdown listeners? It is a lovely 9.30 a.m. On this sunny California day, it is good to be back. It's good to be in studio. We got the walls painted when I was not around. We got the walls painted. Chin, what color would you say this is, sir? I asked for gray, and I looked at the picture, and it was gray, but when it got here... It's a gray-ish with a tint of lavender, I would say. I don't know what it is. I thought it when I walked in, it looked a little reddish. Well, I mean, if you mean red, by red, if you mean purple, (laughs) it's a touch of purple. I'm not mad at it. It doesn't look bad. Especially next to the chairs. It kind of blends better with the chairs. I don't know. And then the Fire to the Kids sign, and then the... That new Fire to the Kids sign, who, who made that? Oh, Ted Munns. Jesus Christ, Ted. Badass. That thing is... He so, drove so, it down. What? From, from where? Vancouver. No. Yes. What? He drove it down from Vancouver. Him and his girl. And were they here to like on vacation or something? And yeah. Drove it down. They went to wow. the comedy store for like two nights in a row too. Damn! I wish I was performing there for him. That yeah. sucks. Damn! That is sick. That might be the best piece of fan art we've ever got. I got to admit, man. That's there's so much detail in it, and it also lights up too. What? Yeah, there's an electric thing that you can Holy mess with it. It's balls. Badass. So that and then the the flags out of wood my man makes. Yeah. So I think we put the find the kid in the middle because obviously the show's find the kid. And we'll have to figure out where to put the flag, but I love that flag. Yeah. We had another flag coming too. Wow. Might have to put them in the new crib as well. Either way, our studio's purple, Jen. <sighs> You're colorblind, huh? A little bit. I must be. Because I, I showed it, you the sample, and you said you showed me the sample. Like Chingos, look, bro, I picked gray. Went, well, that's clearly purple, <laughs> sir. Damn, it, but it doesn't look bad. We'll see what people, you know, yeah. what, what they, what the fans think. We can always white. repaint. It's too, better so. than white, though. Yeah, it doesn't hurt the eyes for sure. Because white is where people complain. People were actually saying it hurts their eyes. <laughs> I felt come bad on. too. I was like, oh come on. Some people, some people have that. I thing. have super sensitive eyes. Super sensitive oh, eyes. I didn't know that. Yeah, it, like I, you typically can't be outside without sunglasses. Because I had um, eye surgery, LASIK eye surgery. Oh, you did. And one of the side effects for some people is uh, light, sensitive to light. Yeah. So, yeah. I oh, yeah. When we life. first got these, you were like. Yeah, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I can't do it. Yeah. Like, it, depending on, like, where I'm, on st- where I'm doing stand-up, if their lights are too bright, by the second show, I'll start feeling sick. And you'll see I'll start to, like, squint. I do remember that from the shows. Yeah, I'll start to you squint like the a light being bit. too bright. No. Yeah. Nope. And, that's, and then when we do like the meet and greets, if they bring it on stage, we go, look how bright those lights yeah. are. Like, what? I'm like, now think of that for four hours. It's true. Like, damn, that's crazy. I'm like, yeah, people don't realize it. Mm-hmm. And it's hot. Those lights are hot. Speaking of stand-up, I, uh, shout out to La Jolla, the comedy store. Got to be honest, man. If I didn't, I never thought I'd find a place better in L.A. I love L.A. L.A.'s my home. My heart's in L.A. However, if I didn't have to live in Los Angeles for entertainment purposes and for my work, I would 110% move to La Jolla, California. That's the one spot I would live besides mm-hmm. L.A. It's got everything, right? <sighs> My word. It's nice. You're surrounded by the beach. There's great food. Everyone's nice. It's not freaking overcrowded like other places. So some of the best food in the world. They obviously have the comedy store there, so you could still do stand-up. Um, obviously not to the love we can in L.A., but still, there's options. But for what I do, there's just no way. There's no way. Mm. It's come from a guy who just bought a house here, so there's no way. Um, but Jay Shab's never been out there either. Shark Eyes Doll Smile, he loved it too. He's like, I can't believe this, man. I'm like, I told your ass. I told your ass. However, to get to L.A. to San Diego took us five hours. <laughs> five what? hours. Five hours. We left that around like 1.30. By the time we oh, got there, I had to go yeah. sh- straight to the venue. There, and Five it, hours. It's, you, even in rush hour, it's never that bad, but there was three like horrible accidents, accidents yeah. where like someone died. Like it was just like the worst accidents you've ever seen. Yeah. Three of them though. Yeah. So maybe they can't drive in San Diego. I'm not sure, but there were some horrible accidents. Um, yeah, the, not complaining. Love my life. Friday was a little bit tough because um, the announcement of my show, which we'll get to on Showtime. Um, I had to do PR for it on Friday all morning from like whatever, 7 a.m. to 1.30. That's why I got such a late start head to San Diego. So you do the PR all day, and I rush home to pack. Jay's with me, and then we drove down. So we hit the road around 1.30. 
you're expecting a little traffic, but five hours, man. That's it. That's terrible. It was a beast. It was a super beast. Um, then my boy Jesus Trijo opened up for me, and he's just so talented, man. He gets funnier and funnier. If you guys haven't heard of him, you definitely will. Um, he, he's just so goddamn good. He's yeah. so good. People love him. Um, he's one of the best, man. So I love doing shows with him. You've seen him. I got to you had to meet him, talk to him. He's a cool guy. Great you know? guy. Yeah. Great guy, man. Um, so yeah, doing shows with him. Had great pad thai out there. Um, had great fish tacos. Amazing coffee. They have such good coffee out there. There's a bunch of coffee shops. <laughs> and then during the day, you know, we're just chilling. I had to do some work during the day for the show. Um, but my brother was like, hey, they have these um, scooters around. It's called, the, it's called the Bird app. <laughs> That's so funny. He's, got, he's like, it's the Bird app. You just download it, put your credit card down, and he, they're just all over. You rent them because we're walking all over. I'm like, dude, I'm sick of walking. He's like, let's get on these scooters. I'm like, yeah, I'm way too big for a scooter. He's like, no. Look at, and I, we saw some like big ass dude on a yeah. scooter, like, like big, <laughs> like Triple H big, like on this scooter. So um, decided to rent them, and we're going around all over La Jolla. And then I was like, I'm pretty freaking, I was good as a kid on those things. I was like, I'm pretty freaking good on this thing. And I told Jay, I'm like, hey, you remember that trick I used to do as a kid where I hop the curb and kind of like do a cool move? He's like, yeah, I'm like, film this for me. He's like, all right. And I posted the video and I, I tried to do it. And obviously I'm 240 something pounds and I land and the, where the handlebar and the like axle meat just snapped in half. Just ting. oh, it actually broke. Damn. Oh, broke. Yeah, I'm definitely in charge for that. Yeah, definitely in charge for that. It was worth it though. It was hilarious. I did not fall. Everyone's like, "Why? Why don't you keep the video going?" Jay Shab. I, I told him. I said, "Tell me you got that. <laughs> Tell me." <laughs> Dead serious, too. You do. <laughs> it looks like you're gonna crash. No, I know. No, I just kept running. I ran it out, man. I ran it out. I ran this bitch. That was out. going fast too. Oh, yeah, things go 15 miles an hour. <laughs> Jeez. But I, uh, in the, in the snug ass jeans and the Gucci shoes, I ran that <laughs> bitch out. I just ran over, I turned around, turned, and I looked at Jay. I went, Tell me you got that. He goes, I don't think I did. I stopped filming. I go, No oh, way. Man. And I, we look at it, he goes, Oh shit, I got it. And I'm like, Yeah, but you didn't get it to all the way through. But yeah. no, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't eat shit, which would have been hilarious. I did eat shit previously. I was walking my son, and I always play this game where uh, we sprint down the, the sidewalk. Yeah. You know how when the sidewalks crack, probably from earthquakes in this bitch, they, it goes, the sidewalk will go up? Yeah. While I was running from them, laughing, and this is at 7 in the morning, so everyone's dropping their kids off at school. So there's teachers and cars and people everywhere, but it's a safe sidewalk. And I'm, around, I'm turning around, and he's trying to catch me. I'm like, good luck with that. And I'm holding this scooter my cell phone. I go, huge. <laughs> Scooter, cell phone go flying into the street. I do like a, this weird like face plant cartwheel thing. I fucked my elbows up, almost hit my face. And this teacher goes, this was the worst part because everyone goes, oh, my God. And whenever my son falls or messes up, I go, uh-oh. And then I hear from, I fall. I'm like, oh, my God, this is so embarrassing. Everyone's looking. And I hear my son go, uh-oh. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I get up, and this teacher's like, oh, loud. Oh, my God. Are you Okay. And I was all, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, please. Don't, let's not make this a big deal. Let's not make this a big deal. I haven't fallen like that in a long time. But yeah, apparently this week was my time to eat some uh, cement. So yeah, so shout out to uh, La Jolla, San Diego in general. I freaking love it out there, man. Definitely want to go back. Once a year, that's the plan. I was there last year, this year. So I will see you guys in 2019. See you in 2019. Um what else is going on? So the Showtime show finally got announced below the belt with Brendan Schaub. It's, uh, it's been a project. been trying to get off the ground for a little bit now. And, um, man, I just, you know, working with Showtime and team with those guys with uh, Espinosa, Brian Daly, Gabe Goodwin, um, our boy Matt, just the, the whole team over at Showtime. Uh, everyone's stoked, man. Everyone's excited. Um, the set is being – it should be done because I have rehearsals today. It's just crazy, man. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all come to fruition, and um, I'm super excited about it. So if you guys haven't heard, the show debuts this Wednesday on YouTube and Facebook on the Showtime platforms. So the plan is twice a month, you will. Get, so every other week, you will get 
two shows digitally, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, and that's available everywhere. I see all the messages on Instagram with UK, Australia, Ireland. Everyone's like, are we going to be able to watch it? Yes. That's why it's digital. And then once a month, you're going to get like a, basically a below the belt on PEDs <laughs> that's on Showtime Network TV, on Showtime Extreme. So that will be on actual TV. And we will also release that digitally after it airs. So it, around the world if you don't have showtime you can see below the belt that's the plan it is not just a boxing show it is a uh basically like my version of a comedy variety late night show all about combat sports and pop culture um you know this day and age in sports and in tv and stuff like that we, we know what you're going to get. You turn on these other network shows. I'm not just talking about fight shows. I'm throwing no shade at any other fight shows. Um, but we know where you're getting. We, we know how hard it is uh, to get into the octagon for the most part. We know, um, you know, you're playing to knock out your opponent. We know uh, we've seen you run before. We've seen you uh, through training camp. We've seen all that. Um, to me, it, it's making these fighters, these athletes, and, and getting ideas from celebrities, their thoughts on, on the fight game, stuff like that, and, and get them outside their, their comfort zone. It's, it's almost the Jimmy Fallon approach. It's a lot to bite. It's a lot to chew off, but um, I'm excited about it. And uh, this first episode, we got the two main uh, fighters for uh, this weekend. So you got Deontay Wilder fighting Luis Ortiz on Showtime this Saturday night. Um, at the Barclay Center in Brooklyn, New York. And we have Deontay Wilder on here talking about th- th- that exact thing, <laughs> Luis Ortiz. And then uh, we have Frankie Edgar yeah. talking about Brian Ortega. And um, n- no spoiler alerts, we'll release a little bit of trailer, but it's Frankie and I um, at um, this, I think J- it's called JR's in um, his hometown. Mm-hmm. In New Jersey, and it's beautiful out there, by the way. And I swear to God, you guys know me. I'm a foodie. It was the best pizza I've ever had in my life. The best. And people are like, oh, look look how fake this is. At least eat the pizza, man. And you don't have straws in your drink. Yeah, man. We're not going to talk with our mouths full of pizza. <laughs> you know, woogies. Um, it's Frankie's favorite pizza. And they kept saying, it's something about the crust. It, the, it's the water, the New Jersey water. I was like, really? And so um, we, you know, we had our conversation. It was a fun combo. We just talked about everything. Frankie's a legend. One of my favorite people in the game, a complete legend. And uh, I had two pieces of pizza. Frankie had four. Frankie had four. And he's like six pounds outside of, you know, what, what he needs to be down to at 145. That's how kind of small Frankie's for the yeah. division. Remember Frankie's fight at 55. Yeah. Frankie had four giant slices of pizza. It was so goddamn good. It was so delicious. And then also in this episode, so we had Deontay Wilder, your main event on Showtime this weekend. We got Frankie Edgar, basically your main event uh, for the UFC 222 this weekend, Las Vegas, Nevada against Brian Ortega. Winner of that probably gets a title shot against Max Holloway. And then uh, we also got Polly Malinaji breaking, you know, Polly's an expert when it comes to boxing, boxing. We got Polly breaking down the fight game, breaking mm-hmm. down Luis Ortiz, Deontay Wilder, just sports in general. I give him some super fights. I give Frankie some super fight ideas. And uh, I just have a conversation with these guys. There's, you know, it's the same as, you know, podcasts. And I think one of the reasons why podcasts and translate so much better than a lot of these other network shows is it's a conversation. I don't go into this thing. I've, I have no um, agenda. I, I don't even really care if Frankie talks about his upcoming opponent. Uh, you know, just trying to – these, these, most of these guys are my friends, you know, so I, I think that's why it worked, and I think that why this show is going to be a lot of fun. And we already got uh, a bunch of stuff going for the, the next show, so it's a good time, man. It's a good time. It's cool. It's cool that's everything. You're doing everything on it. Yes. Yeah, it's awesome. Covering everything. So, you know, if you're an MMA fan, UFC, Bellator, Invicta, wherever the hell you are. We got you. If you're a boxing fan, and it does, it, you don't have to be, oh, well, he's just biased towards Showtime. Nope. I'm covering Canelo, Triple G, Lomachenko, you name it. it, it, it uh, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, um, Billy Joe Saunders, Crawford, Thurman, Porter, Tyson, Holyfield, you name it, man. We're, we're, we're covering it all. Um, so uh, there's no reason to, to pick teams. It's an entertainment show that covers uh, combat sports. That's what it is. So it airs this Wednesday 
And hopefully you guys tune in. I'm super excited about it. I think it's a good product. And uh, I have rehearsals today. That's why my schedule changed a little bit. So, oh, and also with this podcast, no one should be alarmed. I'm still doing all the, the fine kids not going anywhere. Brian and I aren't going anywhere. Uh, the Big Brown Breakdown isn't going anywhere. I'm still doing the, all the same podcasts every week. Now that changes. The only thing that changes is the release of the podcast now. So, and the name of Big Brown Breakdown, so it's all in line under one brand. The Big Brown Breakdown, you don't have to change your subscription. Not, the show dynamics not going to change. I'm still doing it from this uh, studio, uh, but Showtime's building a little like background there. Everything's exact same. Everything you're listening to, or if you watch this on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, whatever it is, nothing changes. The only thing that changes is the name Big Brown Breakdown will change to Below the Belt with Brendan Schaub. Boom. That's it. No one should be alarmed. And I'm doing it Monday mornings now instead of Tuesday afternoons. So you guys have it a lot come out a lot sooner at the beginning of the week. And then so my schedule will change. So I have below the belt podcast, Monday mornings, finding the kid in the afternoon. Um, then Tuesday you have finding the kid. Wednesday I'll film uh, below the belt, the TV show, digital show. And that's the plan. Cool. That's the plan. So you guys don't have to really worry about anything. Nothing changes for you guys. Just tune in, watch the show, comments, likes, and uh, I appreciate the support, man. It's been it's been overwhelming how excited people are about this. And I got to be honest, I've, I've worked with a lot of companies. And you guys, if you follow me, you know the, the company I've worked for. I've never worked with anyone as good as Showtime. As far as just um, giving me full creative control, Basically, you know, not not put any chains or restrictions on me. Um, if I have an idea, they go, we're down for that. What about this? I go, that's cool. I think this is cool. Though, like, all right, let's do it, man. Yeah. It's I've, it's so refreshing. It's um, that they're it's very unique in this business. So um, I'm excited about it, man. Super, super excited. But yeah, I, my brother said we'd be getting emails like, oh, that's the end of Firing the Kid. Why? Because we canceled Vancouver. Let me tell you something about Vancouver. Me and Brian will get into this later today. I'm Firing the Kid. Vancouver, the Just for Last comedy tour from the get-go was going to be tough. Uh, Brian ha- had a lot of things up in the air. I had a lot of things up in the air. Our agent committed us to it. That's fine, but they know going into it. And he warned them, hey, these guys might back out because they're literally waiting on two things. I was waiting for the announcement of my show and the playing of my show. Brian's waiting for his stuff. And then remember, Brian originally pulled out because he was going to go to Saudi Arabia or Iraq or Syria or some shit and do comedy. Terrible idea. But that's what he was going to do. But that was an official. So Brian goes, hey, I can't do it, man. I'm backing out. So, all right. So we clear the calendars. You know, because if Brian's out, I, don't, I was going to do stand by myself. I'd rather just do a full weekend, though. I don't need to be involved in the comedy festival. You just don't these days. And there's nothing wrong with comedy festivals, but I'd rather go and do a full weekend so I, I can see and um, touch as many people as I can with my comedy instead of just one night at a comedy festival. So Brian backed out. So then I'm like, all right. So then my team clears my schedule and commits to other stuff. And then Brian goes, oh, actually, I'm back in. And then, well, it's a little late. I can't do it now. And that's just how it went. We're rescheduling Vancouver. So anyone who's upset, uh, obviously, I have nothing to do with tickets or refunds. They're going to refund all that. I have literally nothing to do with that. Uh, I don't sell tickets. I don't work for Ticketmaster. Um, but I'll be back up there. I'll probably do six shows for you guys. Six shows. I'll make it up to you guys, I swear. Vancouver's also one of my favorite spots. So that's how that went down. Fire Kid, there's nothing wrong with Fire Kid. We're not going anywhere. Neither is Big Brown Breakdown. It's just changing the name to below the belt. Uh, this week's a little crazy, though. Yeah, so you got uh, this podcast now. You got Fire the Kid. And then I go to... Um, downtown where the studio is at and i'm trying to have them send me videos of them building the studio it's pretty cool i, I i've never been part of something like this where you, they build your own studio you've seen some of it i've said have they seen some of it Jen? no they sent no. me a new one today because it should be done because i have rehearsals today so uh i drive to, the studios are downtown la live area and um so i'll do rehearsals and then tomorrow 8 a.m call time first day shooting the episode and then uh wednesday morning I have uh, I'll be on Sports Nation on ESPN talking about Below the Belt and everything else Showtime and UFC, and then that afternoon I fly to New York. I'll be in New York um, Thursday. I'll be on all the Barstool podcasts, um, some other podcasts you guys know, and some other press out there. And same thing Friday morning, and then Friday afternoon I'll take a flight back to LA, and then Saturday I'll be doing rehearsal for E and the Oscars. 
And then Sunday is the actual Oscars show, which I will be doing with E. Damn, That's the dude. schedule, man. That is crazy. It's crazy. Super blessed. Hashtag blessed, as the kids say. Hashtag blessed. But I'm getting sick because I'm on planes all the time. Yeah. My stomach's better. My stomach's, I'm back on coffee. Oh, that's the other thing. The Big Brown break, uh, the Big Brown coffee. Big Brown dark roast. The Big Brown coffee co. We back up in this bitch. Uh, once, this dies, once this month dies down, and so hopefully we can launch in April or May. That's my plan. Because I didn't want to sell you guys coffee. If I'm not Drink. drinking coffee, I can't yeah. try it. Can't be some fake. Can't be some fraud up in here. Can't do that, man. So, yeah, exciting stuff. Um, but Saturday is a big one. For box in general, UFC in general, too, you got, you know, uh, Cyborg fighting. She's fighting the Invicta champ, uh, Yana Kunitskaya. Kunitskaya. One more time, Chin. Kunitskaya. Kunitskaya. Mm-hmm. You guys know how, in, maybe you guys were like this in class or in school growing up. When I see when I see a word, it can be challenging for me. If I hear it, I'm good. Hmm. If I hear the correct pronunciation pronouncement of the song, uh, or song or a word, yeah. then I'm good. But if I just read it, it's like Jesus Christ. Yeah. Especially if it's foreign. Yep, names are hard. Names are tough. Yeah, names are tough. <laughs> Especially Russian names. Say it one more time. Yana Kunitskaya. Yana Kunitskaya. Kunitskaya. Like, Kunit- don't even look Kunitskaya. at it. Kunitskaya. 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 Yeah. And that's Russian. I think it Kunitskaya. is. Kunitskaya. And she is easy on the eyes. I don't know why they do this. They're... <laughs> How? Hey, UFC. How in the world can you not get a photo up of a pay-per-view that you're asking people to pay at least $60 for? $64.99 HD, right? Yeah. How can you not take the time? UFC digital team, I love you guys. I love all you guys there. There's not one person I don't like in the UFC offices. You guys do great work. Listen to me right now. Whoever is in charge of the website, you have got to get a picture of the main event on a UFC pay-per-view card. I don't care what the issue is. I'm sure she's there, right? She flies in tomorrow night. You Invicta, which you guys own, I'm sure could send you some sort of digital picture. I don't even need to match cyborgs. All I need is a goddamn picture and not a <laughs> shadow. And obviously, clearly, that shadow is Misha Tate. God damn it. You're asking us for money. <laughs> How did you know that? I, have, I, know, Dude, I, know, that's I know me some Misha Tate. I know. I recognize that ass from anywhere. Hey, back to UFC. You guys have got to put in more effort. That's crazy. Imagine me selling a show, a stand up show, and it's a blank picture. Hey, please come see me. Uh, sorry, I don't have the time to put the picture. That's insane. I don't get it. Imagine the Super Bowl. Imagine Super Bowl they, uh, on fucking Fox. And there's one picture of Tom Brady, and there's a picture of uh, Carson Wentz, and it's just blank. You'd be like, <laughs> come on, man. It's so weird. That's insane. And you're asking for money. Yeah. And you wonder why numbers are down. Now everyone's numbers are down. It's not a UFC problem. It's a sport problem. It's a digital media problem. It's a problem for everyone in this business. So let's not all take that blame and put it on mixed martial arts and the UFC oversaturating. However, this ain't helping. Because anyone goes, ah, Cyborg's going to sell this thing. What if Yana wins this bitch? Yeah. What if you, if you have another Amanda Nunes situation on your hands? What if she merks your cash cow? And then everyone goes, wait, who is that? I don't know. There's just a shadow on the internet. Hey, man. Help me help you. This is driving me nuts. Well, we just don't have a picture. I'll go to her Instagram and put one on that bitch. She's a gorgeous girl, too. That's huge, man. <laughs> That's huge. She's pretty. She's a fo- world champion. She's from Invicta. And she trains at Jackson's. That's pretty big, man. There's a lot to work with there. However, if you just have a blank picture, that could be Francis Ngannou for all I know. <laughs> I don't think so. I have no idea. How, how would you know, Chin? <laughs> it looks That's Francis like Ngannou with a tit job. <laughs> Prove me otherwise. We have no idea. She's a beast, though, man. Let's see. She was born in uh, 89. Let's introduce you to Yana. Hit the last name for me, Chin. Kunitskaya. 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 Could it, <laughs> it could be Japanese. Could it, That's how I do it. Yeah. Could it, uh, introducing Yana. Could it, 
Kuniskaya was born in 1989 in the city of Murmansk. 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 Russia. I don't say Russia there, but it is. Yeah. Uh, so her mama was a professional gymnast. Father was a professional skier. That's a good story for reals. She became in, uh, involved in martial arts at the age of 12. Okay. Um, most of her fights ended in knockouts at 12. Uh, she did not suffer any defeat in 16 years. She went to study in St. Petersburg. Started studying boxing in Russia. How you can study boxing in Russia? That's hilarious, but it's awesome. At age 18, started practicing mixed martial arts. Oh, she has a kid. She's a mother, too. This girl has a great story. Mm-hmm. What are we doing? Um, she's been fighting since 2009. She made her debut at the K1 Grand Prix in Poland. She won by TKO first round. Jesus Christ. She's a little monster, isn't she? Yeah. Legit. Wow. So she defeated Tanya Evinger. You know Tanya Evinger. She's the one, you know, the, the tough, I called her zombie mom. Um, I have nothing respect for her. I know she got upset at that. But Tanya Evinger, um, she fought uh, Tanya Evinger, who Cyber actually beat. And then, you know, this girl lost her, but still. She is the bantamweight champion. Interesting. Pretty girl, though. Trains at Jackson's. Obviously, the Holly Holm game plan um, didn't work, but easier said than done. But they probably come up with something. Got tough, tough gig when your first fight in the UFC is, is against the greatest of all time. That's mm. a tough gig. Either way, <laughs> either way, you got to put the girl's picture up. That's the least you can do. Seriously. At the very least. Yeah. Spell her name wrong? I get it. I struggle with names myself, and I... This I talk for a living. I I get it. I get it. You got to put a picture up. Do that for me, please, guys. That's so disrespectful. God, dog. But that's this weekend. I don't know how I get started on that. It's a it's a it's a good card. It it, it should not be a pay per view. Let's be honest. This should not be a pay per view. It's a it's a good card though. Um, there's fights this weekend. Do you happen to see them, Chin? I didn't check. You're no. busy. Chin, yeah. So Chin's been grinding his ass off. Chin's a producer. You're like DJ Khalid. <laughs> Maybe. You're like Scott Scor- Scorch? Scott Storch. 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 He kind of fell off. Now he's back. He's back. Yeah. He's back and he's I fat. Like it. It's sick. Yeah. And he's ha- like happy and healthy. He's just yeah. smoking weed now. Yeah. He used to, uh, I think he got super rich and famous. He had all those Bugattis and shit. Yep. And then started uh, just eating and um, doing drugs, tons of alcohol. drugs and coke. And then he got off that, and now he's back to eating, but no Coke, and he's making some jams. Yeah. But either way, you're the new Scott Storch. <laughs> Thanks. Because uh, Chan and Skyler, I need a new song for Below the Belt. Obviously, we can't keep the Big Brown Breakdown theme song. So I reached out to the one and only voice from the heavens, Skyler Aston. The and, best. The best. And so the, the intro, you guys will see it on Wednesday, actually, but the intro is uh, animation. Mm-hmm. It goes through kind of my career from football to having a kid to stand up podcasting to hollywood so it's like this progression and um so skylar put the theme song together over that produced by chin dj chin 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 <laughs> do you have any name you'd like to go by chin just dj chin not even dj have you, were you i'm surprised you never dj'd no nah, dude i don't i don't think that's uh that badass really just saying do you think they're awesome DJs? Uh, no, no. I, like I think offense. I put my playlist on right now and then just pretend I'm fucking. Yeah. Arr, 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 arr. Now a bunch of DJs are like, what the fuck? I know, I know they're going to hate it, but I mean, I'm sure there's some really talented ones out there, but like actually creating music and producing music is so different. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, but you and Skylar laid it down. I just heard the final uh, part today. Yeah. Just heard today. Dude, did not you? Not with headphones on, though. You no, headphones not with on. headphones. But I don't have the same ears as you do. So I go, oh, that's dope. And I'll just move on. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's good. It'll work really well. So I appreciate you, Jen. Cool. DJ Thanks. Chin, Chin, Chin. Um, I post this on Instagram. You see this little girl singing for the Girl Scout cookies? Dude, it was so awesome. Hit that I love for the fans. How good is this? And I bought literally eight boxes. <laughs> Before this, I don't want to pretend that she sold me on it, but yeah. I definitely helped the Girl Scouts out. <laughs> it's so cool. She's so cute too. Yeah. 
And she's talented. She hits the notes, too. Yes. The dad's a little too serious, but whatever. <laughs> We're gonna get him right here. You hear me? She's so damn cute. <laughs> See, oh, she kept singing, not the dad. <laughs> like, what? She's still what? in the back. <laughs> like, why, why not let the little girl do that, though, dad? Like... <laughs> She, she, she was like, too. okay, you take it. She knew the part. Too. Wasn't it great? It's, it's just a, such a feel-good post. I don't know what it is. It's awesome. Oh, dude, I saw that. So in Tagman, I'm like, holy balls. This is this made my day. Yeah, it's awesome. Thin man. <laughs> She's so cute, man. Super cute. Super cute. Hey, Dad, let's not steal the limelight from your daughter, though. He was all, tagalongs. Oh, no, what's his? Samoas? Samoa. Those are great. Are they? I don't I think, think I've ever had any Girl Scout cookies ever. What'd you say? I know. I don't think I've ever had them. How long have you been in America? <laughs> in America? 38, 37 years. He, ne- he ain't never had a Girl Scout I don't know cookie? why. I don't know why I've never had any. It's weird. I'm so disappointed in you right now. You've never had one. I'll bring the box yeah. tomorrow. Okay. but yeah, I'll I've bring, I'll bring one of the rolls of the Thin Mints I have. You never had Tagalongs? The I've peanut butter ones? any of them. All right, so we're starting Monday off, huh? Right. You're not a goddamn you're you ISIS. I don't you know, know what a it goddamn is. Girl Scout cookie. I don't think anyone's ever offered. I guess I have to go out and buy it and purchase. Hey man, <laughs> they're everywhere. You can't shake these little girls trying to slang cookies. I always walk past. I was them. at the Grove, and whoever the mom, I don't know if they have to have licenses or what, or uh, or some sort of permit. But she was in the Grove just slanging <laughs> cookies. By the train, you know, the, the Grove, the train goes around. She's where everyone gets off the train. My son loves the train. I get off. I'm like, well, 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 what do you have here? And then my girl's all, no. And I'm all, I got to help the kids out. I'm like, I will take eight boxes. She's all, eight? I'm like, let's open the kids out. I got four tagalongs. Those are my favorite. Two Thin Mints and uh, two Samoas. I'll bring some tomorrow. God damn it, Chin. I know. <sighs> well. Uh, so let's talk about the fights uh, this past Saturday. Good fights. And I was lucky I got to see uh, the majority. I saw all of the main card and then saw a good portion of the prelims. I didn't have to illegally stream it like Brian Callen does. Um, Alan Joban, Ben Saunders. Uh, you know, I thought Ben looked older. I thought it's what a huge win for Joban. Great knockout, the inside leg kick. And then, you know, Saunders was obviously a little beat up. During that, maybe a little wobbled, and then when he turned, and Joe Ban just lands that flush overhand on the jaw. Uh, I saw people say knockout of the year, little early, little early, but definitely impressive. Um, probably the most impressive win all night would be that Brian, and he's gonna kill me for this. Some shot me on Twitter. Uh, Gallagher, Kelliger, Kelleher, Kelleher, Kelleher. He goes, she, I think he said Schwab. I know it's tough, but it's <laughs> Kelleher or something like that. Let me make sure I get it right. Because this kid's a badass, and he destroyed uh, Hen and Brow. Took him down, which is not hard, uh, easy to do. Actually, mm-hmm. no one takes him down. Um, let's see here. Um, da, 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 it's definitely got to be Kelleher. Let me see. He, he spells it out for us. Thin Mint. <laughs> it's I was saying that too. I was saying that all day yesterday. Thin Mint. Hopefully, she sold every. One of oh, those goddamn cookies. Oh, her. here it is. So Brian Kelleher says, hey, Schwab. Don't call me Schwab, man. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't come on the show if you do that. It's Kelleher. 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 Brian Kelleher. Get together. When's the Big Brown boom breakdown coming? Big fan, let's do it. Let's do it, man. We'll figure it out. Um, Can you do the first of never? No, I'm just kidding. We will figure it out, though. Uh, most impressive uh, of the night, I thought. I thought it looked great. Being a guy like Ken and Brow is a huge one for that kid. And, um, you know, Brow, obviously, uh, 
still talented, but um, it's definitely the, the end of the road for that man. The main card, and there's so much to break down and talk about on this main card. Um, Max Griffin versus Mike Perry. This was a product of Max Griffin being a lot better than we thought, but also Ma- Mike Perry not putting his best foot forward. And I'm a huge Mike Perry fan. I've, I've always been a Mike Perry fan. I thought he looked overtrained. Uh, he's been competing way too much. I think he's competed uh, nine times in two years, something like that. He, he's on this crazy pace. And when you're young and you're on those crappy contracts and you're hungry and you're trying to make a name for yourself, you can do that at a lower level. And he's not, he's not at a low level at all. He, he's fighting tough, tough guys. That being said, the Don Cerrone has set the blueprint for you guys. And I, and I think it's hindered Donald's career. Um, I don't want to say that it, it's, 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 you can say it hindered or maybe it's helped because Donald Cerrone is that guy fighting one anytime. I'll fight this, 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 this much. But Donald Cerrone is never going to be, he's never world champion of the UFC. You know, it's going to be tough for him to ever get that. So you live and die by the sword. We love Donald for that. We love Mike Perry for that. But at this stage of the game in 2018, you cannot fight like that. You cannot fight like you're on the regional circuit. You can't compete at a high level and do that. You need the proper time off. You need the proper dedication to camp, to cutting weight, to improve your skills, and to, to build this foundation to put your best foot forward to win fights in the UFC now. That, those days of just going, fighting whoever, where, what's his name, Liverpool, Darren Till, never heard of him. Let me go up there. How'd that work out? Uh, for Mike Perry, yep, let's do it. Let me fight Max Griffin. I just had a rough, rough fight with Patsinia the other day, you know, a, a few weeks ago. Sure, let's do it. I want to fight in Florida, kind of my hometown. Let's do that. You, you just can't do it, man, because now you're paying the price. Now you've lost two in a row. You, the, you, the hype's a little gone. The people go, oh, yeah, he's young. He's 27. He is, but there's a, there's, and he's going to bounce back, and he's always going to be exciting for you to watch. But as far as being a contender, now it's going to take a while to get that back. And I think you have to learn that. You, you want to compete. You want to fight the best, but it's a, it's a, you're a professional now. You can't fight like you used to fight back on the regional circuit. Learn from other guys. Who learn. You learn from Cowboy. Yeah, Cowboy's a huge name. Cowboy's you know, a Hall of Famer. Cowboy's one of the greatest fighters of all time. Cowboy... Uh, is never going to be world champ. It's going to be tough. Now, he, I hope I'm dead wrong on that because I love Don Cerrone, but it's going to be very tough if you're fighting at that pace. You just can't while these other guys are resting, improving their skills, and hitting that octagon as close to 100%. No one's really 100%, but as close to 100% health-wise as they can. It's tough enough as it is. When you're fighting all the time, you just can't do it. Um, Latifi, OSP, um, you know, that's a toss up. You know, in the light heavyweight division now I, I saw uh he was uh Luke Thomas. Shout out to Luke Thomas, one of the best in the game. But I think it was Luke Thomas who who said uh the longest winning streak now in the light heavyweight division is ready? Do you know who it is? Steepy, right? Shogun. Oh it's light heavy, heavyweight. Uh, Shogun. Shogun. He's won three straight. That's so old school. You're like, what? Is it 2004? Nope. It's 2018, and Shogun has the longest winning streak in the light heavyweight division. Obviously, they're not including John Jones, um, but that's where we're at right now. Uh, to pull Again, to pull off a, a stand guillotine, you can only really do it if a guy's rocked. Other than that, there's so many ways you can defend that. You can take the guy down. You get side control. But when you're rocked, all that's out the window. Um, good fight. TV hits like a Mack truck, got a hold of his neck. There's no shame in that. Um, I'll watch those guys fight every other weekend. Latifi gets on the mic. He has that awkward call out. You know, I've kind of I've hit on this. Guys feel like they have to do this. You call out Daniel Cormier, who's the light heavyweight champ, but who also has the, the biggest fight of the year against the heavyweight champion for the heavyweight belt um, at heavyweight in July. He's also coaching the ultimate fighter. You might as well call out Bruce Lee. You, you complete waste of your time on that mic, Latifi. Uh, and, he, and what he's doing with this big win in light heavyweight, so goddamn thin. It's the worst division in the UFC. It's so thin. There's not even the dinosaurs anymore like the heavyweight, but it's so thin. He just doesn't want to fight his boy Gustafson. Uh, yeah. It doesn't really work like that now because if, if you want to get that title shot, you, there's no way you're jumping your boy Alexander. It's just not happening. So 
You have this weird, shitty, awkward call out of DC who's, I mean, what do you want to fight him? 2019? You, you think a win over OSP is that impressed for you to get a, a title shot against DC? There, there's only one fight that anyone wants to see at light heavyweight and be DC, Gus Finn. That's probably not happening. DC is going to fight this heavyweight fight. No matter what happens, probably backs out. And when I say backs out, probably walks away as one of the greatest of all time. Um, I could f- see him fighting Ozdemir. I'd see the Ozdemir fight happening for him. Other than that, come on, bro. How dare you call it? How dare you call it DC? Like I say, you might as well call it Bruce Lee. You have a better shot of fighting the ghost of Bruce Lee than you do get into DC, who has a fucking super fight in July against Stipe. Sorry. And then after that, who knows, man? What are you doing? What are you doing? I, you know what? Call it Chuck Liddell. How about that? <laughs> call it Chuck's looking for a fight. You have a better shot fighting Chuck Liddell in the UFC as a main event in Hawaii than you do fighting DC anytime in this century. It's not happening, man. That was awkward. Um, but great win. Shout out to Latifi. Uh, and then the, your co-main event, you had Jessica Andrade versus Tisha Torres. Jessica Andrade, man. Just this little tank, one of my favorite fighters to watch, if not my favorite, uh, especially at straw weight. She's just this monster. And, you know, she's mixed with power and skill. And Tisha Torres is also known for her power. But Andrade just manhandled her. Just, I should say, uh, woman handled her. Just tossed her around. Uh, I agree with the, the judge in 29-27. Um, and for Jessica Andrade, I would love, because we saw Jessica Andrade versus uh, Joanna Yonjenchek, right? We've seen that how that breaks down. It's a tough matchup for Jessica. However, the fight is Andrade versus Rose. That's mm-hmm. a motherfucking fight. Because Rose, she's nowhere near as strong as Andrade. But what Rose is is explosive and crafty, and she's very good at submissions. So the, I think she can negate a lot of Andrade's brute strength with technique. Mm-hmm. And it's such a great matchup. I would love that fight. That'd be my number one fight at strawweight. Rose has to get through uh, Yun Jenchek first. But Andrade 100% is your next contender. She's the next one to fight for the belt. Hopefully it's against Rose. Um, then featherweight. This is the you know fight everyone's talking about for the wrong reasons. You know, Jeremy Stevens defeats Josh Emmett. I think I uh, predict Emmett winning by decision. Uh, but it's always a toss-up with Jeremy Stevens, who has just grenades in his hands. You know, Josh Emmett landed uppercut, sat Stevens down, then Stevens obviously did work. You you hear all these other fight outlets just focusing on, oh, Jeremy Stevens, it was dirty, it should have been stopped. And those people have never fought, so, so they have kind of no idea what's going on in there. This isn't a Jeremy Stevens problem. This isn't a Josh Emmett problem. Josh Emmett's jaw uh, fractured Orbital is the problem. However, this isn't a fighter problem. This is a judging problem. I'm sorry. This is a referee problem. This is on Dan Mirgiata. For Jeremy Stevens, if you guys think those elbows were behind the head, try throwing an elbow. If you're listening to this the, the, in your cubicle or wherever you're listening to this or when you go home, your buddy, try throwing an elbow and your buddy's moving and you got to make sure they're legal. It's in the act of the motion where, where Josh Emmett is turning. Those elbows, I don't really have a problem with. I really don't. When that stuff's happening, when the bullets are flying and you're just trying to hit the dude and he's moving and turning, that's kind of on him. So those I'll take. And Josh and uh, Jeremy Stevens have some of the best elbows I've ever seen. i ever seen. Uh, Crow Cop on the ground with elbows might be better. However, for a lighter guy, Jeremy Stevens might be the best as far as ground and pound in the game. With elbows. I think Khabib probably has better ground and pound, but Stevens' elbows are the best in the game. And then everyone's talking about this, the, the knee, you know, down opponent, the knee. Well, let's talk about the rules. How much of a shit show clusterfuck is it right now where we have this set of rules, the unification rules, and this state's doing this, and this state's doing this. Now you're fighting Florida, which is notoriously known for one of the worst commissions in the world. It, it, it's, it's tough for the fighter. Um the and the knee didn't land. It really, it didn't affect the outcome of this fight. I don't get. I don't care. It was illegal. It this. It, it didn't land. It didn't affect the fight. Josh Emmett would have lost that fight whether that knee was thrown or not. So let's take that out of it. What he did was an illegal knee. One hundred percent. That knee is illegal. It's a down opponent. You can't do that. Who's that come down on? Should I come down on Jeremy Stevens? Should Josh Emmett have to stop the fight? Should Josh Emmett have to complain? Nope. That's why you have a giant bald man who's qualified to referee this fight. His name's Dan Murgiata. I love Dan. I think Dan's a phenomenal referee. However, this is on him. This is on him. Think in the NFL when you get a face mask. 
Every player in the NFL knows as soon as they touch that face mask, you're getting a 15-yard penalty, my man. You know it. So you see them grabbing like, fuck, and they back up like, damn. They know right away. There's no, there's no complaints. They just know. You can't do that. Horse collar tackle. We know right away you're getting a big-ass penalty. In fighting, it's kind of like, it's up to the ref. Maybe. I don't know. So it's not Jeremy Stevens' job. It's not Josh Emmett's job. They're fighters. They're going to do their thing. I, 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 he, it was an illegal knee thrown. It didn't affect the outcome of the fight. The, the problem here is not on the fighters. The problem here is on the refereeing. Dan should have went, whoa, whoa. It's, there, there should be, and I say this with eye pokes, groin kicks, knees to down opponents, any of those, any of those things, there should be no gray area. If you land it or not, he should stop the fight and yeah. take a point from you. Mm-hmm. If you got poke a man, man in the eye, whether you meant it or not, you get a point taken away from you, stop the fight, and they get five minutes recovery. If you kick a man to the groins, there's no warnings. If you grab the cage, there's no warnings. This, this weird culture of warnings, and it's up to the ref, there should be a zero-tolerance policy. If we know that, if the fighters know that, they're going to be way more willing to oblige by those rules and not throw an illegal knee. Now, when you're in the heat of the moment, Jeremy seems I'm, you know, has him hurt. And now Josh Emmett's kind of rocked, and he might put his hand up. He might put it down. We, that's tough to ask a guy, Jeremy Stevens, especially a vet of his caliber, go, man, his, knee, his hand was kind of down. He's like, well, look to me like he's coming up. And Josh Emmett goes, I was kind of out of it. I don't know. Again, that's not on them. That's the job of the giant referee inside that octagon to have a zero-tolerance policy. And to you, we're always going to have this. We're always going to have this. Now, people focusing on this and not focusing on the amazing fight between Jeremy Stevens and Josh Emmett, you're you're messing up, man. You're focused on the wrong thing. Point your anger towards the referees, not Jeremy Stevens. What he did was an amazing victory over the number four guy in the world. Should be ranked number four? God, no. Come on. These rankings are a complete fucking joke. Who makes these rankings? It it all depends who's fighting on Fox, who has a big pay-per-view coming up, who's selling what. It's it's a joke. It's a joke. You got Jose Aldo, ranked number one in the world at featherweight. He's lost two fights. You got Merck in two fights. You you can't you can't be biased in these rankings. You you can't have a favorite in these rankings. That's not the way the game works. Unfortunately, our game works like that. How in the world does that happen? You, you can't. You got Ronda Rousey still ranked. She's in the WWE. You fucks. Where's Brock? Why isn't Brock Lesnar ranked? Why isn't Brock Lesnar ranked in the top three? Well, he he doesn't compete. I'm I'm sorry. He's under the same contract Ronda is. Why don't we have Brock Lesnar in the heavyweight division? Uh, is he not one of your favorites? Think of the morons who do these rankings. Of course they're going to be biased. These rankings are so silly, and why we obliged them, why we even entertain them is silly. It's because of Fox. Fox wanted it, so your, your viewer at home who knows it, know two shits about the game go, oh, wow, the number two versus the number seven. That should be a good fight. Not, oh, two professional athletes. Here's their story. This is why you should watch. Nope. They want the quick fix. Oh, okay, number nine versus number two. Okay, that means they're good. It's crazy, man. But people are focused on the wrong thing. Amazing, amazing uh, fight by Jeremy Stevens. Amazing fight by Josh Emmett. Nothing hanging his head on. Um, for Jeremy Stevens, I do think, um, listen, the winner of Frankie Brian Ortega is going to get that title shot. I'd almost guarantee that. You're going to get Jeremy Stevens, Jose Aldo. Jeremy Stevens probably merch jo- uh, Jose Aldo, knocks him out, and then he gets the title shot. Could be the year of Jeremy Stevens. Hmm. But there's a lot of a lot of guys yeah. at the top. But for him to be, uh, for Jose Aldo to be f- no, number one in the queue is hilarious. Wait, because his body of work four years ago? What the fuck? What a joke! It's a problem with our sport, man. You got these old uh, riders, these these freaking. They're just out of touch, man. That's what you get. Ah, oh, you have some current events, Jim. <laughs> Yeah, since you talked about that Emmett fight and the knee, Emmett is going to appeal the loss. I mean, I get it. I don't. See That's it what you do after a loss, but there's no shot, especially in Florida. It's not happening, man. Mm. Just take the loss, get back to the drawing board, you'll be fine. Cool. All right, now let's move past that one. Conor McGregor posted on Instagram that he offered to fight when Max Holloway pulled out. 
of the Frank Yeager fight. <clears throat> so um, he he offered himself up to replace him. Yes, and so the the way this works is when. Uh, and I love Ali and Ali's Frankie's manager and Khabib's manager and a bunch of, you know, one of the best managers in the game. When Ali goes, that's bullshit. We never heard anything. Well, Connor's not going to text you about a Frankie fight. What that what happens there is Connor texts Dana White directly. Connor, if he wants to fight, he's not dealing with any uh, anyone else. He's going straight to the horse's mouth. That's what happens when you're the, the biggest superstar in the UFC of all time. So, um, you know, Ali goes, we've never heard this. Connor goes, I actually offered it. I'm sure the UFC was like, there's no way we're going to let you step in on short notice and fight at 145 against Frankie, who is a tough matchup, but I, I would assume Connor would be the favorite there, but tough-ass matchup. We, we can't promote it right. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're the negotiations of our TV deal. We need to let them know that, you know, we, you're still this huge draw for whatever reason we do a short notice and it's not as big as it could be it would destroy us so th- there's a few business reasons why this fight didn't happen but i 100 percent think conor mcgregor offered himself for this fight amazing man yep short notice too he's a fighter man he's a badass what else you got um well that was the next one but you already saw that i I'll bring manager Bellis, coach go off on Coach go Frankie Manor's manager coach. It's just typoed. Coach go off. <laughs> what website is this? MMA fighting. MMA fighting. Jesus, man. Frankie Ma- Edgar's manager coach go off. <laughs> coach go off on prostitute Conor McGregor's latest comments. Yeah, I get it. He just said that he was offered. Well, he says that Conor turned down three fights with Frank Edgar before, which I don't know if that's true, but. I don't know if that's true. I mean, they tried doing the short notice one against, you know, Chad Mendez and Frank Yeager, and he decided to pick Chad, but mm-hmm. I don't know about that. It's a good, that's a great fight. Great yeah. fight. Frankie's a legend. Obviously, Connor has his tools. It'll be an amazing fight. Speaking of great fight, Edson Barboza versus Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee finally got a fight. What? Well, they're looking at it. It's pretty much set for a fight night Atlantic City main event. I love that fight. Kevin Lee got himself yeah. a f- Caught his little self a, fl- a Brazilian fly in his web. A little <laughs> Brazilian fly in the Kevin Lee web. Shout out to Kevin Lee, Big Brown alumni. Um, hopefully he found a – does it say anything about his coach? Did he find a coach? Uh, That's a great fight. Say. That's a great fight. That's a scary fight for Kevin Lee for this reason. Barboza, people think, got exposed with his fight against Khabib where he got taken down over and over. When I spoke with Frankie, I go, how surprised were you? He goes, dude, it's tough for me. Eddie Alvarez, who are high-level wrestlers, high, high-level wrestlers, to get Barboza down. We, it's very rare we get him down in training. Damn. So, yeah, it shows you how much of a monster Khabib yeah. is. So he goes, we did not think that was going to happen. So when we saw it, we are like, what the hell? Freaky. Shows you how much of a freak Khabib is. However, this can give fighters a false sense of confidence when they're fighting Barboza because Kevin Lee is a wrestler. He obviously has good striking, but his forte is ground and pound and wrestling. Um, and he's also very athletic. But if you think you're going to go in there and take Barboza down like uh, Khabib did, you're in for a rude awakening. That's a great fight, though. I great love fight. that fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, another fight, Jacare versus Kevin Gaslam is official. That's interesting. Rio de Janeiro. UFC That's a 224. great fight, too. Why they got to do my boy Kelvin like that? Why they always send him down to Brazil to murk these Brazilians? <laughs> Brazil. Always. Yeah. Always, man. Yep. They constantly send that poor kid down to Brazil. Nothing, nothing, nothing's wrong with Brazil. God, let him fight in California. Fucking his last fight, he was he was in uh, in China. We fought Bisbee. Far, you know, they just the man can't fight in the U.S. Huh? That's a great fight. That is a barn burner of a fight. I would. God, who do you think's favored in that? That's a good question. I'm gonna fight. imagine. I'm gonna imagine Ke- Kelvin Kelvin's hands. Yeah, because you know Shocker's getting older. Boy, my boy Eddie Bravo gets his work out cut out for him as far as a coach goes. Because you you know you're facing the greatest him or Damian Maya jujitsu practitioners of all mm-hmm. time when it goes down to the ground. I love that fight. Yeah. We'll love that fights. fight. Both yeah. those fights, man. Yeah. Look at the UFC getting it right. What else you got? All right, this is just a simple post that I know you've seen already. Dana White posting a picture with Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar wearing a UFC shirt, and Dana White just puts a smiley emoji. 
I'll say it again, and I've, I've always said this, and there's nothing wrong with this. You know, Dana's the best uh, promoter of all time, I think, in any combat sports, boxing included, obviously. Um, he's an entertainer, man. This this keeps it relevant. This keeps everything going. I'm sure they they had a conversation. Brock Lesnar's contract is uh, open, uh, is ending in the WWE, I think, after WrestleMania. I think after April, so he could get back into the UFC. I don't know what he is with as far as USADA goes. I think people could find that out. Is he in the USADA drug program? You know, where, where is he on that whole thing? Because we can't have the same mix up as we did against Mark Hunt. You can't have that. Remember that Mark Hunt was suing the UFC for mm-hmm. that. So um, I hope Brock Lesnar comes back. If I had to predict something, mm-hmm. if I had to predict a fight we get this year or early next year, you know what I'm going to say? I know exactly. John Jones, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> yeah, dude, that would be freaking sick. I'm out of breath. <laughs> I'm speechless. A John Jones, Brock Lesnar fight? You And we're in the money fight era. We're in the entertainment era yeah. of fights. That, my friends, is a mind-blowing fight. That is the greatest fight in UFC history. <laughs> that is the single greatest fight in UFC history. And Jeff Nowitzki, it's just me and you talking here, bro. <laughs> you know I love you. I just gave you the Golden Stitch name because I was trying to be funny around my friends. You know I love you. I need you to take the night off. Look at me. I, again, there's no one watching. There's only a few million. Listen, Jeff, DM me. I need you to take the night off. Brock Lesnar, John Jones. We'll call it Take It Easy. Taking it easy. And that's directly at you, Jeff Nowitzki. I don't need you messing this up, bro. You're doing a great job. You've taken out some of the best in the world, Lance Armstrong, stuff like that. I need you to go get a cup of coffee when Brock Lesnar and John Jones scrap. Don't mess this up for us. Do not mess this up. God <laughs> damn, that dick. That fight makes my dick hard. That would that'd be probably the biggest fight. UFC? Has to be, right? Ever. 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 They would throw the the freaking bank at Brock Lesnar to make that fight happen. I can't even imagine both of them, like, in the cage, just looking at them in the cage together. Is this real life? Yeah. Is this Avatar 4? (laughs) UFC edition? Well, I mean, it's that's insane, man. It's almost hard to comprehend. It has to happen. My man. young mind can barely deal with this. <laughs> you to I bet you John Jones is the favorite. Of, yeah, I would say for sure. Even though Brock Lesnar's enormous. And if Brock gets him down, that's trouble. Yeah. And they both, listen, they both had a long layoff. They both come from kind of shady backgrounds. You know what I'm talking about. They're both, you know, going through some shit, long layoff. Oh my God. That's the fight. That's what I think's next. And you're the brain busters, <laughs> and then the winner of that fights the winner of Steep Bay DC, and that just builds that winner up even more. You get Steep Bay Brock, amazing fight. John Jones Steep Bay, ridiculous fight. If DC to win, DC Brock, DC and Brock. That's the only fight Corm- Cormier is going to wait around for. DC Brock is sick. DC loves WWE too. He's balls deep in WWE. Damn, I didn't even think of that one. Oh, and then there's one little other fight you're forgetting about. If John Jones were to beat Brock and DC were to beat Stipe, you got John Jones DC for the world heavyweight champion. <laughs> you know what? I'm fucking out of here. God. Dude, God. heavyweight, man. That's the place to be now. And just and the UFC just fully redeemed themselves. <laughs> just when I didn't think you guys could get any stupider. You go and make John Jones versus Brock Lesnar and fully redeem yourselves. It's a great fight. God damn, that makes yeah. my dick hard. What else you got? <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll move. I'll show this one later. Um, but for this one, Mike Perry, did you see the tweet that Colby Covington did? Yeah, because people Mike- tagged me on and went, uh, is this too much now? <laughs> Dude, it's so bad. Is it? Yeah. So this is his tweet. At Colby Cove MMA. I'm a Colby Covington fan. Let's see. Remember I told him, don't cross the line. Let me see if we cross the line here. Hey, at Platinum Perry. Maybe having your ratchet horse face girlfriend as your head trainer isn't the smartest idea on the planet Earth. 
But hey, when you're the product of cousins fucking in Florida, how strong can your decision skills how strong can your decision making skills be? Hashtag UFC Orlando. Talking about his girlfriend. I don't think it's too much. Really? Nope. It's getting a lot of attention. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's why you do it. That's why you're Kobe Covington. You know, you, you, listen, I don't know how stressed out he is when he lays his head down at night, or you know, and, and how he feels about this stuff. Um, his girlfriend isn't ratchet. He's not horse face. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Mike Perry's not, um, you know, an inbred fighter or anything like that. <laughs> I wouldn't even entertain all that. I think what he's doing, it, it's it it might be poor taste, but it's well played. It's obviously garnering a, a ton of attention. So do your thing. I don't think he crossed the line with this one. If Mike Perry is going to have his girlfriend corner him, which I do think is a huge mistake. Again, he he has the skill set. He has the mindset. He has all the tools to be a, a, a phenomenal fighter, maybe even world champion. He has all that, but he's not approaching this game like a professional. He's not. He's he's fighting too much. His training camp's too short. He, he's too active. Not enough rest. There's, there's a whole lot going on. I, I don't know what his training camp and trainers are like, um, but when you have your girlfriend in there cornering you, again, um, Unless she's some savant we don't know about, unless Greg Jackson and Mark Henry had a baby and it's a daughter, she probably shouldn't be in there. You don't want that. that you, you don't want your girlfriend as your cornerman. And the reason why I, I probably know a thing or two about cornermen, I've been a cornerman several times in the UFC, but also I obviously have a, a background in fighting professionally in the UFC. It's a tough gig. Uh, you know, in real time and giving people actual instructions that are going to help them win a fight. That's as tough, tough as it comes. She was yelling, kick the leg, kick the leg, break his leg. Yeah. That, that that's, that's not helpful. That's, that's something I would hear a guy with a, a tap out shirt and an affliction hat on in the crowd, you know? So, um, I don't agree with Kobe's, Comments, however, on Mike Perry's end, it's, he's not taking the best approach to make himself successful in the UFC. And him having his girlfriend as the cornerman is a sign pointing to that. Him being so active is a sign pointing to that as well. Listen, I told you, if I'm Colby, you run straight through that goddamn. They tell you, hey, this is too much. You run straight through that. No one's doing it right now, and he's the guy doing it. And look at him. Look at, yeah, man. 3,000 likes, probably, probably the most you know, retweeted and liked thing that night of UFC Orlando. A lot of fighters are, are sticking up for Mike Perry, though. I'm, I like Mike. I love Mike Perry. I don't agree with calling his girlfriend a ratchet horse face. I agree with Kobe Covington. If he wants to take this route, what he's doing and the attention that he's getting. Negative or positive, people are talking about Kobe Covington. It's true. And he's not even fighting. And he had the most active tweet that night. Mm. So how are you going to argue with it? Yeah. But I think my and I, I love Mike Perry. I think Mike Perry does have a a problem, and he has it has to go back to the drawing board and decide. All right, my camp, my nutritionist, my cornerman. I'm too active. I need some time off. If if I'm if I'm gonna reach my potential, this is what I have to do. And he's not doing it. What else you got? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think you're gonna like this one. So there's rumors again that Tito Ortiz and Chuck Liddell would rematch. A part three, right? So Ortiz is saying stuff like he would come out of retirement for that fight, and Chuck is saying like he would actually take that fight. And but this article in particular was interesting because it says Chuck would be shocked if he wasn't cleared for a return. And his I shouldn't laugh though, but and his reasoning is because he's had tests done for mountain climbing. You can see her here. I had medical exams for mountain climbing, and I cleared everything there, so I should be just fine. Well, he says, I don't know why I wouldn't be cleared. I have medical exams for my mountain climbing. Yeah, a little mountain climbing and fighting is a little different, though, Chuck. Um, and I cleared everything, so I'd be just fine. We'll, see, we'll have to see. If they don't clear me, I'd be shocked. They've cleared a lot of people in lost less shape than I am. So it, it's not about your physical shape. It's about the the damage the to mental head. health. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's about the where, where, where's your brain at? Where's your cerebral skills at? Where's your speech at? And I would say that there's some signs of speech impediment from getting punched in the face with Chuck Liddell. Mm. 
Not that he, he couldn't still compete. He probably can. Do I want to see it? No. Am I one to judge? Nope. Is there a place for this? Yes. Is there a fan base for this? Yes. Is there a Masters League? And this would be, uh, you know, a Masters League kind of uh, fight. Uh, people would tune, tune in. You know, it'd reach over a million, not pay-per-views, but as far as spectators. What Do I want to see it? No, not at all. No, not in the least bit. I wish guys would retire and find some one of their other passions and make tons of money. That's what I wish would happen. But that's mm. not the way this works. Uh, Scott Coker had something to say about it as well. So the thing is, this is sort of like clickbaitish. The title, it says, Scott Coker unsure if Bellator would be able to promote Chuck Liddell versus Tito Ortiz 3. Okay. But he's saying that just because, you know, the contract stuff with UFC. Because Chuck might still be under contract with UFC. Like a freeze contract? When he left? Yeah, with the, the UFC, they do some shady shit. So yeah. the, one of the reasons they're, they're one of the best organizations, they have the best lawyers. So um, when you retire, which I did, you're, you're, you're not released of your contract. Your contract is frozen, so you can't go anywhere else. So if you decide to come back, it has to be in the UFC. However, with Chuck, I'd, I'd be interested to see how that works. I'd assume Dana would kind of let him do his thing. I don't think Dana's going to hold Chuck to anything. He said that he wouldn't let him do it, obviously, in the UFC because he cares about him too much. Yeah. He recently said that. But Dana I wonder did. what he... Would he let him? I, you know, they're they're friends. I, I think they're still close. I don't know. I, what do I? I wish Dana would go just for his health. We go. No, nope, we're I'm not saying. releasing you. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, it, it's not even a UFC versus Bellator thing. It's just as a friend thing. I don't want to see you get hurt, man. Mm-hmm. You don't need any more punishment. You're showing some signs. We don't. We don't need that. But I don't think if if let's say Chuck's for whatever reason needed to fight, I don't think Dana would hold him to it. I don't. I think like yeah, do do your thing, man. I have four hundred eighty million dollars in the bank. I don't give a flying shit what anyone does. That's how I would act. Mm. But I don't run the UFC. Let me see. If they did fight now, you would take. I'm imagining you would take Tito now, right? Or would you still take Chuck? I, I don't even know, man. I I have to see it the way ends. I I don't know. I don't know. I hope it doesn't happen. Yeah. I love both those guys, Chuck and Tito. What else you got? Let's see here. So I guess there's betting odds for John Jones if he's going to actually get arrested this year. So how about bet DSI? This is hotsauce.com. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. How about shout out to hotsauce.com. How about uh, his uh, hearing is tomorrow? Yeah. So it is Monday at 1040 a.m. And his hearing is tomorrow in Los Angeles, California. John Jones finds out his fate tomorrow. So the results of John Jones 2014 failed drug tests for him to be eight month to year suspension plus 275, 13 months to three years plus 325, four year suspen- suspension plus 1000, <laughs> six month suspension plus 1150, any other suspension length plus 5000, no suspension plus 10000. Will John Jones compete in a UFC event in 2018 minus 115, so even money. <laughs> Will John Jones ever compete in another UFC event? Minus nine thousand. That's silly. Jeez. Will John Jones be arrested on eighteen? Plus thirty five hundred for yes. Minus seven hundred for no. John Jones' next opponent, uh, the favorite is DC, which I disagree with that. Alexander Gustafson, Stipe, Francis, Kane. You know who they don't have on there? Brock. Hmm. Yeah. Go up. They should um, go back up. Those other ones are ridiculous. I'm going to entertain those. But as far as the suspension, uh, eight months to year suspension plus 275. That's my bet. I would even put money on the six-month suspension, the plus 1150. Can you actually bet on this? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's There's actual betting lines that are coming out tomorrow. Holy shit. Um, man, you guys know me. I fancy myself better. I would bet on the for plus two seventy five, but hundred dollars you get two hundred seventy five dollars back. You might put a thousand dollars on you get some cash back. Huh. Eight months to year suspension plus two seventy five. Six months suspension plus eleven fifty. God damn! I think it's either I think it's been somewhere between six months and a year. That's what I think. That's so crazy. We'll see tomorrow. Fingers crossed. I hope they bring that. I hope, hope, he, hope he fights this year, man, against Brock Lesnar. What else cool. you got? Let's see. Brett o- Okamoto tweeted that Musasi. He's back. He's going to fight 
Rafael. That's a good Carvalho. fight in London. Mm-hmm. I'll take that. Belter. That's dope. That's a good fight, man. Cool. Is that it, brother? That's pretty much it. All right, man. Well, there's UFC this weekend. The Showtime this weekend. Um, let me do the Showtime first. So you got Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz. They're supposed to fight uh, before, if you remember, but Ortiz uh, got flagged by uh, Vada testing. Um, and he said it was a prescription he was taking. Uh, Ortiz is undefeated. Um, South Paul, he's Cuban. Uh, they say he has like 500 amateur fights. Um, he hasn't fought the best competition, but he's a scary uh, South Paul Cuban who might be 60 years old. We have no idea. He's a monster, has a chin. He's never been dropped, uh, has a huge amateur background. He's the guy no one wants to fight. Uh, you guys, if you're not a big box fan, you've probably never heard of him. He's literally the guy no one wants to fight. He's not very marketable. His English isn't great. They call him King Kong. Uh, he's a southpaw, which is a nightmare in itself. And he has crazy knockout power, and he has a chin. But he's not going to sell a lot of tickets. Um, you know, So he, he's a, a tough customer. Now, Deontay Wilder was given many choices, three different choices of an opponent to fight after he destroyed Stavern in his last fight, which, remember, uh, he won via knockout in the first round with his hands down. You can go back and watch that right now. Um, you know, so they gave Deontay Wilder an uh, option who to fight. He goes, nope, I want Ortiz. That fight has to happen. And they go, well, you know, there's some other guys here. He's not exactly his fight. And Ortiz goes, give me him. I have to beat him to get to Joshua. I have to get to, to, get to Joshua winner, uh J- Joshua Parker or Anthony Joshua, Joseph Parker or Anthony Joshua, I have to beat Ortiz. So he wants his fight, um, you know, and he is a slight favorite. And I, I just think Dante Wilder, for whatever reason, you know, he gets a lot of hate. He gets a lot of fans, too. And I always say, you know, you're not doing shit if you don't have haters. That means Dante Wilder's doing very well because uh, he has a bunch of them. The, the guy's impressive, man. You know, I think he's 38 or 40 and 0, uh, 39 knock, four, I think it's 40 and 0, 39 knockouts, something like that. Either way, there's only one guy he's never has only gotten the distance with him. That was Stavern, and he ended up beating the brakes off him his last fight, knocking him out. Um, I think Wilder gets it done. I, I think gets it done under eight. I will say that. I think Wilder uh, TKOs this gentleman in under eight rounds. So, um, and I, I just think it builds this hype of Deontay Wilder. And so you have Wilder. You kind of have a, a heavyweight tournament out of four guys. You have Wilder versus Luis Ortiz. Then you have Joseph Parker, the New Zealand heavyweight champ, two-time defend champion, who might be my favorite heavyweight right now. Him, him and Wilder are great dudes. And then you got, <clears throat> obviously, Anthony Joshua, who's the face of boxing right now. So, yeah, there you go. He's 39-0 with 38 knockouts, um, which is pretty crazy. So he's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven-time defending world champion. Pretty cool, man. Um, but I think uh, Ortiz uh, takes his first loss. And I think Ortiz is 20-0, and, and he takes his first loss. There you got it, man. And that's on Showtime this Saturday. Showtime. Not pay-per-view. Showtime. Winner of that probably gets Joshua. I'd be willing to bet. If you don't know Joshua, is looking up, man. Great story. Kid from Alabama. Uh, started fighting to help pay for his daughter who suffers from spina uh, bifida. Spina bifida? Yes. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, he's a great dude, great story. Um, so you're talking about Wilder, right? Wilder, yeah, dude, he was actually really cool, great guy, great right? guy, yeah, in here off camera, amazing guy, yeah. amazing guy. He he will be a superstar, and he, you know he's already a big star, but he will be your face of boxing if he can win these next two fights. Um, and then yeah, you got the UFC pay per view this weekend. I don't think technically it should be a pay per view. Um, I think it should be a, a stacked fight night. But this is the the day and age we're in in, in 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 the UFC. So UFC 222. Obviously, we've had some issues. You know, Frankie Edgar and Max Holloway were supposed to be your um, headliners. Cyborg took the short night notice fight against Yana Kutsukaya, <laughs> and uh, they came and put her picture up, which is frustrating. You know, is this another thing? Do you guys want to pay to see, you know, Cyborg murk this girl? I, I think it's going to be a tougher fight than everyone thinks, um, but I do think Cyborg gets it done. Um, I will say she gets done with a third-round TKO. Um, Cyborg is the best female fighter on the planet. Hits harder than anyone uh, Yana has ever faced. But I, I think Chris gets it done. Uh, second or third round, uh, it will be an entertaining fight. Chris will do her thing. Um, and then you got Frank Yeager versus Brian Ortega. Mm-hmm. One of the tougher fights to call for me, Brian Ortega is a close friend. Frank Yeager, I love. I've known him forever. Um, did the show with him. 
Brian Ortega, 13-0, undefeated, Frank Edgar, Hall of Famer, walking legend. Um, he's obviously coming over a huge win. Um, um, when I say coming off a huge win, Brian Ortega's coming off that huge win of Cub Swanson, where he always kind of beat him twice. Frank, you know, Cub Swanson got saved by the belt um, with that Darsh choke, and then, you know, he ended up getting a hold of his neck with a guillotine choke and win the second round, early in the second round, got performance of the night. Oh, man. You know, Brian Ortega is a guy who uh, he just finds a way to get it done. You know, he knocked out Clay Guida um, in the Diego Brandown, the Thiago Taveras fight, um, the Hanato um, Marciano fight, you know, the guillotine choke. If you go back and you look at Brian's fights, he's he's he can be a little bit of a slow starter. The Cub Swanson, obviously not. He got a hold of his neck. But he, he can lose some rounds, and he finds a way to pull it out. When you fight a vet like Frankie Edgar, if you get behind, the chances of you being able to pull something off on a guy of Frankie Edgar's caliber, who who is a legend, who's fought some of the very best in the world, and and, and uh, you know, unless your name's Gray Maynard, uh, Ben Henderson, or um, Jose Aldo, you're you're not you're not sniffing a win over Frankie Edgar, and we've seen Frankie before. Where he fights these young up and comers, the Yair Rodriguez's, and just sends it back to the drawing board. We haven't seen Yair Rodriguez since. And to beat Frank Edgar, you have to have such a – you have to be a Swiss Army knife. You can't be this big machete with just one special skill set. You just can't be to, to beat a guy like him. You know, you see what he did against a guy like Chad Mendez. He's beat Uriah Faber. You know, he beat Cub Swanson, beat the breaks off BJ Penn, Charles Ovalera. You know, he, he's beat the who's who, the Sean Shirts, if you remember those fights. So um, the only question here is when does Father Time touch Frankie on the children and go – all right, my man, let's go, legend. Let's go, Mr. Iron Chin. Let's go, my man. It's time. Is it this fight? I don't know. He looked damn good in his last fight, which is, you know, in 2017, May 13, 2017, against Yair Rodriguez. That was easy work for him. Not to mention, you know, everyone's all up on uh, Jeremy Stevens' nuts, which I am too, and we should be. Frank Yanker kind of handled him for three rounds, if you remember. So... Um, that wasn't that long ago. That was, you know, that was 2016, you know, 2017 fight Yair, Yair Rodriguez. Frankie's not that active. You know, he fought once last year, he fought twice 2016, he fought twice 2015, fought twice 2014, um, fought twice 2013. So he's fighting twice a year. So people are, well, he's old, he's fighting less. Not really. That's what Frankie does. Um, he, he doesn't fight a ton. He fights twice a year, maybe, you know, obviously once last year, and he has a lot going on. I hate picking against my boy Brian Ortega. I fucking hate it. Close friend, I came up with him. He's trained by literally one of my best friends, Henry Gracie. And I have to see those guys. And I hate <laughs> making picks. But this is why you guys listen. And uh, it doesn't bother me when I'm wrong. You know, if, if you're scared to be wrong about making picks, it's a fight game. What the fuck can you do? The chance of Brian Ortega getting a hold of Frankie's neck is not good. Frankie is trained by Thomas Almeida. If you, know, if you know Almeida, he's, he's literally one of the best of all time. Big dog Almeida. He, he's amazing. This is the other thing Frankie has. So jiu-jitsu between Almeida and Henner Gracie, we got jiu-jitsu covered. So I'll, I'll say they're even there. I think Henner is the best uh, MMA jiu-jitsu coach in the world, but um, Almeida is, is just as good, and he's been with him forever. And Frankie's a black belt. Brian Ortega's a black belt. Brian's jiu-jitsu is way more dangerous. So Brian has an edge as far as finishing a fight with jiu-jitsu. We know this. But I'm going to say those two cancel each other out as far as jiu-jitsu goes. They both got that covered, both black belts. The one thing that Frank Yeager has over anyone he fights, especially Brian Ortega, this is not a knock on Brian Ortega's stand-up coach. I love that guy. But you don't have a Mark Henry. And I've said this before, and I know this from personal Firsthand experience. I've trained this man, Mark Henry. I trained with Mark Henry before I fought Mirko Krokop to help me with a world class kickboxer who's a southpaw. And what this man did with me in just a few weeks, Frank Gaines has been with him his whole career. Mark Henry is the guy you don't hear about. And I can say this in full confidence he is the best striking coach in the world today, by far. The, the issue is, is he puts so much energy, he's so obsessive about every detail that he can only really put that energy into Frankie Edgar. Mm. So his other guys, he, he's, he's good with, but his focus and sole focus is Frankie Edgar. And I, I, if you talk to Frankie, 
which I have. He's on this week's of Below the Belt. Frankie talks about how damn good of a coach Mark Henry is. And um, if you can listen to Mark Henry, if they would mic him up, it sounds like he's playing a video game. It's insane. I've never seen anything like it. I think Frankie wins via TKO in the third round. And that sucked for me to say. Mm. Either night, I mean, either way, the, on that night, whoever loses, I'm going to be bummed about. I love both guys. Both guys. Oh, that stresses me out picking that mm. fight. Uh, and then you got Stu Verlowski. It's a fun one. The fight fans will know it. The heavyweight division one's older. Um, I think Verlowski's time is just done. He's had his run. Um, I think Struve gets it done. I think Struve gets it done if he has his mind right. You know, obviously he has the heart issue. Um, his last loss to Volkov's nothing his head on, but you know, I, I think Struve pulls it off. But I don't think either guy's gonna, gonna go too much in the heavyweight division. Um, the other fights worth noting, you know, you got Kat Zingano first fight back in a long ass time. Um, so it's good to see Kat back in the division, and she's trying to. She wants to fight with Cyborg. I will bet you any amount of money if Cat wins that fight, she gets on the mic and calls out Cyborg, and that will. There's a good chance that could be Cyborg's next fight if it's not uh, Amanda Nunes. Oh man! And then you got um, Mackenzie Dern making her debut. If you don't know Mackenzie Dern, she's a jiu-jitsu wizard and she's a smoke show. There's so much potential for her to be a superstar. It's unreal. Oh, you're gonna hate this. <laughs> you're gonna hate. It. Oh my god! <laughs> I can't. I fucking can't. You guys don't have a picture of Mackenzie Dern? Oh, I can't believe it. Smoke show too. She's the hottest girl in the UFC. <laughs> By far, the hottest girl in the UFC now. Now that uh, Misha Tate retired, Mackenzie Dern is. By far the hottest girl in the UFC. And she's so ridiculous at jiu-jitsu, it's not even funny. She's ridiculous. One of the greats. One of the greatest female jiu-jitsu practitioners of all time. And Ashley Yoder is n- not bad either. Mm-hmm. This is a great fight. Mackenzie Dern wins via submission. Any brain busters there? <laughs> um, Darius is fighting Hernandez. They don't have his picture up. You got Dots and Munoz. Dun- that, that one prelims are pure fire. Prelims are great. That could be a fight night in itself. Pedro Munoz, John Dotson, that's an amazing fight. And then you got uh, C.B. Dalloway, who's in a lawsuit with the UFC because he got hit on an elevator or some shit like that. Hector Lumbar coming back, the best ass ever in the UFC. <laughs> Saw him in sweats. Um, that, that, that FS1, FS1 prelims are ridiculous. I got um, uh, Duran via submission. I got Darius via TKO. And I will take... Um, Dots and via decision, and I will take CB Dalloway knockout. Sweet. I got Zingano decision, Struve uh, submission, O'Malley TKO. It's interesting that's on the main card. Um, and Frank Yeager uh, TKO and Cyborg. Uh, pure beat down. But it's a better fight than you guys think. Should we jump some fan questions? Sounds good. You want to start at the top? I'll start at the bottom like we usually do mm-hmm. so we can knock some out. Sure. Ten minutes. You want to get it. Yep. You ready? Go ahead. Yeah. Elias Farrow. Uh, when are you coming to Houston? Oh, soon. Soon. Real soon. Uh, hold on. I'm coming there. I'm coming there. Um, I'm in Houston. Six. So is that uh, June? May, June, July. Yeah, June. I'm there June 22nd through the 24th. I'm going with you, dude. Yeah? Yeah. My family's in Texas. Oh, really? Yeah. Come on down, Chin. At least for one. DJ Chun, 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 Chun. Come on DJ. down, dog. Uh, at Death by Xanax, how big's your weenie? So that's a <laughs> terrible question. You literally wasted your life to put that. And Death by Xanax. Things. Oh, he's a. Oh, man. You got to block that guy. Okay. 
It's just a, it's a weird <laughs> one. I uh, got another one if you want. Uh, at NJ Ramen 808. Yo, B, your boy Colby. I mean, I guess he's my boy. I just respect that he's taking a marketing uh, lane here. I don't know, man. Went kind of harsh, homie. Mike's girl and shit. What do you think about the whole thing, the backlash from other fighters? I told you, if you're going to talk this shit, if you're going to go this route, you're going to get a backlash. This is what you sign up for. Everyone's talking about him, so it's working. Mm-hmm. <laughs> at Del- Dilorama, thoughts on John Jones' horrible, horrible deadlift form. When you're strong and you're a freak like John Jones, who gives a fuck about form? Uh, real quick one. <laughs> that Dion Waterson, 96. When you're on Ghost Adventures, was it fake? Real to me. So yeah, I really have no f- idea. You know, I'm not part of the production or anything. Yeah. I just show up to a haunted ass place. My boy Zach Baggins shows me around. I'm scared as fuck. Fair enough. At Steven underscore Good, what's the next fight for Darren Till? Uh, I bet he fights. And I, uh, Coach Kavanaugh said this. I uh, was like, hey, what do you want to think of Darren Till versus Gunny Nelson in uh, Dublin? So there you go. He's not just throwing that out there. At Pat dot McMullen. At the moment, who has the best chance of being the UFC's next star? Mackenzie Dern. Kenny Plea, what would you give the movie, the best movie to at the Oscars? I love I, Tanya. Not Dunkirk. I, watch, I just watch, I have to watch my, it's part of my job working the Oscars this weekend. Dunkirk, uh, a little bit all over the place, man. There we go. Go ahead. Brian Wolf, should UFC go to three minute rounds? Ra- it's not going to happen, but should they go to three minute rounds? Nope, we have bigger fish to fry. Waste, <laughs> waste of time. It's three fives, for God's sakes. Why even waste your time trying to convert rules? That- we have a judging refing problem. I don't give a fuck about the minutes and the rounds right now. At pilot underscore Andy89, what do you think about uh, Baker Mayfield if he goes to the Broncos? I would love that. I'd much rather have him than that uh, USC quarterback. Much rather have that. <laughs> Uh, how about this? Cody dot Rux. What do you think about the the on air talking arguing about the illegal knee? I guess I, they were. I like it. I I think you know in this day and age these networks they want to ignore things that everyone at home's thinking about. So I like it that DC uh, and uh, Dominic Cruz got into it and they both had great points. But I think just to skim over it is silly because everyone at home's like, what the hell's going on here? Mm-hmm. At B R O Mez, basically Bro Mez. Interesting hashtag or handle, my man. Should Josh Emmett just ride off in the sunset? Hell no. That man's so goddamn talented. What's wrong with you? Because he lost one MMA fans, man. Not good. Uh, Mag Banrin, who's got the best fashion sense in MMA? Best shoe game. Who is the best shoe game? Best fashion and shoe game. In MMA? Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess best fashion. I'll go with Kevin Lee. (laughs) So much dead air. What is it? No, I'm saying so much dead air. Oh, it's all right. Oh, good. Uh, I'll do do two more and you do one more. Sure. Uh, at J underscore Kilburn 33, not fight related. Are you familiar with any British comedians? Are you serious, sir? Jimmy Carr and uh, Ricky Gervais. They are the best. I think, uh, you know, British comedians, some of the best in the world. They don't get enough credit. Uh, I actually had a convo and a conversation with Jimmy Carr at the comedy store, and uh, he's an amazing gentleman. At J Amazing, uh, do you ever plan to do stand up in the Bay Area? I'm in San Jose, end of March. Close enough. Uh, Reyes three. Should Stevens get a title shot next, or one more top five opponent? No, I th- I think you should fight Jose Aldo next because otherwise he's gonna be waiting way too long. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, yeah, I think he fights Jose Aldo and 
then he wins that. He should definitely touch that. Or he can wait. Who knows? Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens with Frankie and um, and Brian Ortega. But Max Holloway is ready to go. So if someone gets injured in that, who knows? But he could. I I wouldn't complain if he did get a title shot. Boom, man. Thank you guys for the fan questions. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Don't be alarmed. Next week, the title of the Big Round Breakdown will switch over to Below the Belt with Brendan Schaub. Everything's the same. Wherever you're watching this, wherever you're listening, whatever device, nothing changes. It's going to look a little different. It's all the same. It's all good, baby. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. Thanks to everyone who came out to the shows in La Jolla, basically San Diego this weekend. <clears throat> Thank you to the Comedy Store. Thanks to everyone, man. So, uh, as always, bigger, browner, batter. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.